Hey guys, so if you're new here or if you're not, if you want to hear me voice act, head over to our main channel, links down below. And if you don't, this channel's solely for TTS. Um, if you want to know all the details about what's going on, we have a stream up that you can go and watch, but let's just get into the video. So I'm a Necron Cryptic, so what? Part number four. I had Oricon follow me into the same chamber in which me and Executioner Phileas had been in several months prior. I took the seat right besides the Ferax throne diadem. Oricon took to simply standing at the center of the room. I already know why you're here diviner. Is that so? Then let us do with pretenses of friendliness. He seemed to almost perk up at that. What was it that you did that birthed and winked out a fledgling star? What rituals have you learned that I have not? I rolled my eye at that comment. You really are up your own ass, aren't you Oricon? Ishka wanted to test his combat capabilities decide to spar with the Gakout, a lich guard, in this fight Ish accidentally turns himself into a Sitan. For 3 seconds. Apparently after this transformation's energy dispersal it created a resonance cascade event and had reawakened 741 Necrons. Oricon divination failed many times and several important divination artifacts were also destroyed and thus a Praetorian was sent out to investigate the anomaly. Ish then creates a dimensional gate, not related to the Elder Weebway, to travel to Solomon's. After he had done that he then went to a star map his cryptics made and added where a few Weebway portals were, only to be rudely interrupted by the aforementioned Praetorian, after a nat 20 intelligence and bluff check manages to get away scot-free but will most likely be under watch by the council. He then goes back to his room room relax, Raminus, and play old human movies. Apparently word spread quickly and many Necrons wanted to watch the movie marathon. Afterwards as Ish is ready to head to Solomon's, Oricon is waiting to talk to him. That caught him by surprise. You've already become the greatest chronomancer of our generation. Your astromancy skills are almost unparalleled, you dabble in both datamancy and plasmancy and still you want so much more. Orokin clutched the Staff of Tomorrow tightly in his grip. You're 17 million years away from achieving that body of light. What? He barked out. Are you deaf boy? I said I know what you came here for snob. I shouted back at him. That shut him right up, which was good. I think I can make something of this meeting. I can give you want but I need something in return. I need you to help me find a certain Tom world I plan on visiting in the near future. He considered my words for a moment, I'm guessing he was weighing in if he should attack me or hear me out. You said almost unparalleled. He said. That's quite right, a Stormancer you're not the only who has foreseen the fall of the Eldery, the coming of the Imperium of Man, the Green Tide, and the ceaseless approach of the hungry creatures. His knuckles clutched his staff tighter as he heard each of my body proclaimants. You of course have the abilities to foresee the future where I have already seen the future. It sounded like he had gritted his teeth. How have you parsed such divinations? I'm an adept reader Oricon, I've read hundreds upon hundreds of books, listened to countless authors, and browsed every entry through the records of Lixicanum. So for the next 18 million years any of your predictions will never match up to that of my knowledge. Enough of that. He yelled. He was really losing his patience with me. Or what, will you jump back in time to find a timeline where you can dominate this conversation? He was making agitated sounds. Fine I'll tell you what you wish to know. I achieved a form that resembles that of the Sitan. Not too far off from what you hope to become in 18 million years. He went still, I've been laying it on extra thick. He deserved to be taken even if he was the only Necron to stand against the idea of biotransference. He started to move once more, actually he moved incredibly fast. Fuck he was moving directly towards me. Without really planning to, I had sent a mass alarm out to all awakened Necrons of my personage being in danger. Even as I dialed my chronosons back it was no use. He was a chronomancer. His manipulation of the flow of time would be far greater than my own dialed back perception of time. I reached for my harp trying to strike a chord, but I wouldn't have the time to make an attack. He closed in on me fraction second, the staff of tomorrow held high and crackling otherworldly energies. And he decapitated me. He was making agitated sounds. Fine I'll tell you what you wish to know. 
I achieved a form that resembles that of the Setan. Not too far off from what you hope to become in 18 million years. Something popped up on my sensory array subroutines I prepared for this encounter. The temperature of his essence totems of time he wore had risen suddenly. And you already jumped back once at least. How have you already fucked up that you needed to rewrite the flow of time? Damn it. He murmured. I locked the current logic chain of the conversation, still running several scans on him as subroutines. There was no telling how many times he would travel back to fix his mistake. I'll stop taking him down a peg for now, he might try and actually kill me if I keep on like this. He eventually cooled off. When you became a Setan like being you registered as a star for the span 3 seconds, throwing off dozens of rituals I had conducted halfway across the length of the void. How was it that a mere Setan entity, even a facsimile of one would be recognized as a star across the expanse of space? That was actually a good question. I hadn't bothered to think about it. What do you know of that Saranoga the Setan known as the Outsider? Orican answered hesitantly, nothing significant I admit. He is like a beacon across the expanse of our galaxy, the brightest of the Setan and I mean that literally. I started. So bright in fact that he could draw things out from beyond our galaxy to snuff us out. I had been mostly just voicing my current train of thought not realizing what I was saying until after it came out of my mouth. When my dynasty fought the outsider we were only fighting a shard of perhaps of 8 or so pieces of the outsider. We lost so much in trying to free ourselves from our gods. The empty country long expanses with thousands of canoptic constructs with only a fraction of Necron still in tune here is enough to show how low we've been brought down. I felt a slight dull static in my mind for a moment, my mental defensive matrix was secure so I brushed it off. Relic malfunction detected. I remember the war, my time was spent besides my Ferak side, empowering and restoring her vanguard as we made march for war. I saw legions upon legions of Necron standing in rank mustering. I saw the vast beacon that had consumed the horizon, it burned brighter than any star we had seen. Its light bathed as we approached, thousands of Necron warriors dead at our feet as we approached. I could see millions of scarabs swarming between our marching legs. I could hear the thousands of skittering feet from the canoptic wraiths and triox stalkers rushing to war. I could feel each devastating step of the 15 seraptic heavy constructs stalked alongside us. I remembered it with such clarity, it terrified me. I hadn't realized I had projected it on the ceiling for Oricon to see. Oricon watched my projection of the war with great interest. Millions of streaks of gorse fire streaked the sky, all drowned into the blistering light that was the outsider's radiant being. Arcs of lightning kissed the ground with destructive force, rending streaks shot through dozens of ranks of warriors. The Setan was hardly fighting seriously as we came to blows with us. With a gesture he conjured screaming tornadoes across the field, sending thousands flying into the air before crashing down miles away. We were immortal yes. But that didn't stop the fact that we were fighting gods. Degradation and static took over the scene. Ours were lost from my memory. As I tried to play the clip further. The static had taken over. Of what we could see was a grim sight. I was adding a new string onto my harp. The iconoclast's cord. I lifted myself from my place of hiding. The sundered remains of seraptic heavy constructs had allowed me a moment of peace. I stepped to look onto the outsider. So much of him was gone now but even still he fought. For every great shot from the network of pylon arrays gotten on the Setan. Tens of thousands more Necrons fell to the cataclysmic power of the outsider. The static builds further and further and further. So much of it is so hard to see what that damned light. The losing battle is raging. Canoptech scarabs die off in the millions, trying futilely to form a sarcophagus to entrap the outsider. I strive to resurrect in the fallen Seraptek but my body is giving way. The resurrection orb is cooking me alive, but I can't die now. The Seraptek constructs sputters to life, coolant and other secretions leaking from its insides yet even still it tries to raise its guns onto the Setan. I fill everything I have within my resurrection orb matrix to the tips of my fingers, about to strike down at my harp. My vision blurs beyond recognition. I don't know what it was that I did. Oricon is cursing. 
wanting to see more, I can't hear what he says. These last moments of pure recall are fading. I see something as bright as a star besides me, where the Seraptak had once stood. More static is covering the screen. The thing brighter than a star fires onto the Setan. And I am left blinded. I feel as though someone is shaking me. When I come to I find the Oricon is shaking me. Cryptic. Come now, what's happening to you? I snap out of my funk and push off Oricon. I'm fine, I grip the side of my head. What's wrong with this Cryptex head? I. The war in heaven was a difficult time. I sputter for a bit trying to figure out why I showed him that, it didn't even feel like it was me showing him. As you saw, the outsider being a star god shone with the ferocity of a star burning across the void attracting who knows what. But what was it that you did to that Seraptak construct? Oricon hissed. I shoved a shushing finger in front of his look Oricon. I am no longer in a mood or mindset to speak further on the matter. Fuck. I need to lie down. I'm going to make you a deal Oricon. I need help finding things. Things that are actually going to benefit the rest of the Necron Empire. I know the when and where on the galactic scale things are. But I need to narrow my searches extensively and you're just the astromancer for the job. If you help me with this Oricon, it'll answer exactly how you can achieve that body of light for millions of years ahead of schedule. Rural is a great app available on the Apple and Google Play Store as well as desktop for creating beautiful 8-bit character art. The app has 14 supported races, 150 plus weapons, 400 plus armor pieces for you to mix and match. 20 plus mini bases. There is that much to work from I was able to make Cold Steel the Hedgehog, the God Emperor of Mankind, Pepe and they are always adding more artwork. The app also has a character sheet to help keep track of everything during games. And if that wasn't enough you can play about with the app for free with limited artwork. So go ahead check it out and if you decide to buy the app use promo code NickBedia for 10% off and it lets them know we sent you. It's a great sponsor and a great app and we hope you guys go ahead and check it. But let's get back to the video. He waited a whole fucking 3 years to answer. I used that time to get several projects started by sending messages to my crew of Cryptex and Canoptec constructs. Fine I suppose that is an adequate enough deal. He answered finally. When am I to put my divinitations to use? Some decades to a few centuries from now. Me and Trazin have lots of work for the greater good. Oh fucking damn it. Why did I say greater good? I just need you to stay out of his and my way. And if you notice any Tom Worrell's about to come to a violent end in the immediate future, fucking tell me about it. Now get off my Tom Worrell you snob. I am getting real tired of interacting with people as of late. Oricon left in a huff, and no doubt is going to try and fuck me over in the future. Problems for later. I've been getting reports of three fucking Seraptak heavy constructs. How in the fuck do we have three of them just vibing out in the middle of nowhere? I had a few death marks guide me to it while I rode atop of a catacomb command barge. It was just as stated, three of them. Hundreds of little canoptic constructs are stirring around them, even Shari is here. I'm going to really just focus on these three folks. Whoever decided it was a good idea to leave them outside for 42 million years needs a swift fucking kick to the jaw. For now I'm going to check up on getting these babies up and running. They have some serious issues when it comes to oxidation issues which is pretty par for the course when you leave a Necron outside for so fucking long. According to the reports from the Deeth Marks have provided we have a fucking moisture rich atmosphere. Shari has actually been working hard for the last 3 years to get rid of most of the oxidation. I'd just have to make sure everything was fine and probably as an added measure add in some auramite circuitry. Over the next 32 years give or take I was finally confident to boot them. I spent another 3 years proceeding to conduct the ritual to reawaken them. It was the same song and dance though it rapidly drained out more than half of my power from resurrection orb matrix. I pumped each one of them with sufficient energy to be at half charge. One by one each of their blue oculars lit up with a blue flame. They each begin to move about, testing each limb. Moving their weaponries. 
I check what's going on behind that head of theirs and I spot something labeled the Stellar Alignment Protocol. It shows that. I left that behind. Oh shit that's a rule on the tabletop. The center Seraptak speaks. And calls me father no less. I stand in stunned silence. Huh. So it's like I'm responsible for their creation. I'm starting to get the feeling I may not actually be a lesser technomancer. I have no recollection of creating him, but apparently I am his creator. He worries about me and I reassure him that I'm fine. I call up the Void crew and inform them we need a transport to bring back all three Seraptak into the Tomb world. I'm just going to keep an open line of communication with this one that can talk, for now. It takes a few hours of prep and even more time to move them but eventually we are able to transport the trio inside. We won't have to worry about rusting anymore. Right as the ship docks down, I'm met by a small scarab with a jeweled red backplate. I instantly recognize what was to go down next. The little thing gave a servile bow, its carapace scissored open to reveal a message or buculum. Projected up at her full height was the goddamn Praetorian, Master Ishka. Height transmogrifier of the Vocat, known as the Awakener. When did I get the title? I am executioner Phileas of the Triarch Praetorians, Herald of the Awakened. Council. By order of the council you are to present yourself on Bakura with immediate haste. Fucking great. I mumble to myself. The scarab prattles on and I get that this isn't a trial but rather an informal symposium. So I can't assume Trazin laid out the groundwork for me. I am told to bring all awakened necrons and constructs. All 775 necrons were packed into the Alchemizer's equation. I had to get Sanat to send me directions to the planet Bakura because the scarab wouldn't say where even though it didn't end its projection of execution Phileas. Technically she did ask me to bring all constructs, so I pack in just about the most active canoptic constructs from the last 104 years that I've been awake. That also includes the three super heavies that just woke up. We still have loads of space in the, the Alchemizer's equation even with all these boys. When we take off I realize I still have the original Doom Scythes from the first trip. With this army I could easily take over a planet, not a chain of thought I'd like to continue for now. I end up taking the Scarab off to another room, I get the feeling Phileas might have something to say for my ears only. I locked myself away in my quarters with a scarab or buculum projection. So it seems you had something more to tell me. I asked it. The Praetorian spoke up once more. The following message is to be off the record. Any word of this to another will result in the permanent destruction of your existence. She lowered her head for a moment. The last time someone with foresight told you of what horrors await us he was shunned disregarded and our whole race was dragged into the flames of biotransference. She was quoting me. You told me this when I asked about your schemes. We cannot deny the failures of the past, so I don't intend to allow your words to go unheeded. I froze at this declaration. Did. Did I honestly get the executioner of the Awakened Council? Wait was she the one who gave me the name Awakener? We of the Triarch Praetorian failed once before. We will not fail our people again. She crossed her arms, dipping her head into a bow. Glory to the immortal empire. The transmission ended. Well that was interesting. I at least have one friend in the council. The scarab went dormant after striking an interesting pose. I just leave the scarab in private quarters for now so I can check out our heading. It's going to take us an entire 15 years even moving beyond the speed of light. Right now I think about speaking with some of the passengers. A lot of these Necrons have been suggesting a new set of armaments. I think I can comply with their demands. A lot of them want revolvers. I get a rather cunning idea. So with a lot of the destroyer cults the new models didn't show up until a new codex showed up. Which means it's fair to say a lot of their armaments didn't show up until around the time the Silent King came around. I can fucking steal all of their designs before they get made. I'm in a fucking ship full of all the fucking resources and help for this endeavor. One by one several blueprints are drafted up. For ranged combat I draw up plans for, the Inmitic Disintegrator Pistol, the Inmitic Annihilator, the Inmitic Exterminator, the Gorse Destructor. Making versions that aren't actually integrated into their hosts, they'll need their own power source though. 
Close bracket. For melee. Hyperface harvester. Hyperface reap blade. Hyperface threshers. Which for the last one I actually have a head start on after spending 4 making during my time working on the scorpioid units. Close bracket. Oh yeah I'm gonna be having loads of fun for the next 15 years. The Inmitic Disintegrator Pistol was the first design I wanted to work on. These Inmitic weapons sort of work like my Entropy Cord and Dissonance Cord. But instead of outright targeting the atom bonds it forces the atoms themselves to violently repel other atoms. I already have the shape of the gun in place but actually need the parts. It takes a year of trial and error. I ended up having to synthesize the electrum strings that make up some of my harp strings and weave them together into a braid. Powering the thing required an enriched uranium power cell, which isn't the standard for Necron tech but actually using atomic energy is kinda. I handed off the first prototypes of pistols out to the Deeth Mercs. Each one of them got a twin pair. The testing phase proved relatively enlightening. They were prone to burning out after prolonged use and the atomic battery was kind of to blame for it. They did exactly as they were supposed to for a pistol, but powering it was gonna be tricky since it did need part of that atomic reaction if it was going to be used. I thought about seeing if I could transmute a compound of living metal, uranium and a few other goodies I had laying around. After about 2 years, 7 nuclear melt ones and 12 uranium fission incidents I do finally manage to get a working version out to the death marks. I swear I occasionally hear them quoting Clint Eastwood. Now it's onto the Enmitic Annihilator, and the Enmitic Exterminator. An assault weapon and a heavy weapon. A few of the scarabs are being a bit more helpful. Some suggestions for power cell packs. They made a few prototype shoulder packs but it's a bit too unwieldy in my opinion. That and as time went on I realized I could just wire them into the backs of immortals. They got to have some sort internal power source. I bet with some modification an immortal could wield the Inmitic Annihilator. That song and dance lasted 5 years to make, we had to rethink the uranium living metal compound. So many mistakes, and so many holes bore into other parts of the ship, I totally ended up killing like 70 or so Canoptech constructs in the process which I promptly repaired. But eventually we had a working prototype for the, the Inmitic Annihilator. I won't build the Inmitic Exterminator at this stage as I am likely to cause a reactor meltdown. Instead of move to make the Gorse Destructor. I already have blueprints for every Gorse weapon at my disposal. It is unironically second nature. It takes around 2 weeks to get a prototype done. Another 2 months to actually fix any minor issues. And by the end of the year I've armed fully half of the Immortals with the final product. They are a bit slower due to added weight but holy fuck is this damage output insane. A pack of 5 of these boys can chew through a terminators and a dreadnought. I'm going to take a break from my work. As fun as it is, it's getting awfully stuffy and tiring for me mentally to just keep at it. If I don't pay attention years can pass. For now I opt to check in on the lich good. And it looks like just about every lich good not on guard duty is all huddled around the massive hollow projection table. A gakkut is more or less just bodying everyone at Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2. I think it's about time I move into some other game. The rest of the voyage is spent dedicating myself in making the actual Ultimate Apocalypse mod. Persistent bodies, ambient weather effects, a soundtrack picked from just about every 40k game I've touched. I have every single unit available from the Elder, Orc, and Necrot roster. It's a bitch to stat out on the tabletop, and balancing was a notion I all but gave up on. I made sure to include every Necron model into the tabletop, from the Pariah, and the Setan Shards to the newest branch of every single Cryptech discipline. I was in utter bliss when I was able to make my true scale Elder Phantom Titans, and more accurate Squigoths with Gargants. This was my ultimate Dawn of War Apocalypse mod. After 7 years I release it to the Lich Yards I don't think I could be any happier. The next year is spent in a blur of interconnected Dawn of War matches. 10 player multiplayer was a fucking mistake. Lich Good and Immortals alike joined into alliances trying to take over their iteration of the planet. I was glad they were all too busy squabbling across the planet's surface to realize I had added way too many units some of which were the destroyers I copied the weapons off of. I'd have to patch them out when I had time. 
Way too many immortals were running Imitech the Stormlord, or setting up Tesseract vaults are just strategically bad places. It wasn't that hard to see why my heavy fortifications and monolith were racking in lots of points. It also helps when I've got a decade's worth of playtime under my belt. Eventually our little LAN party was over. We had finally arrived to the world of Bakura. Over the next few hours we navigated the surface to a designated space. Looking over the planet was a bit somber. Billions of Necrons slept here, but only around 50 or so were actually awake here. The Awakened Council and that of the Triarch Praetorian. I looked over the thousands of dormant pylons, the miles of monolithic structures, the green glow that shone across the entire expanse of the planet. If I made a misstep here, I would be put to the chopping block. No tabletop RPG is complete without beautiful models on the table and the best place to get models is from us. If you check the link below we have everything you could need for your magical realm. Only the finest of big titty wafers here. But if you're not into models or don't play with models we got you covered with subclasses such as the Gachimashi Wizards, the Simp Warlock and the North FC Fighter. Also we have started selling 5th edition adventures with our first one featuring Belle Delphine, the succubus that has poisoned the town's well and turned the villagers into simps. If any of that stuff sounds fun to you go ahead and check the link below but let's get back to the video. Eventually when we touched down I received a hail from the scarab. Once more its orbuculum projection projected the memorable visage of executioner Phileas. We of the awakened council welcome you master Ishka. High transmogrifier of the Vokat, known as the Awakener. My singular ocular twitches at that. You are to report to the designated chamber with all haste. Your cohort will be outside of the chamber but will accompany you until then. I think I got the hint of a smile but I probably imagined it. I look over the directions given to me. Come all, we march. I send a mass interstitial message to my cohort, and soon the feet of hundreds Necrons touch down on the slumbering Tom world. We marched on, passing by animated lich goods and Praetorian ranks. Every wall surface a decorative art piece depicting ancient wars, gods long gone, battles won and losses. The weight of history would have been utterly oppressive if it wasn't for the thousands of steps ringing out in near perfect unison. I swear I heard one of the bigger Canoptech constructs humming the Imperial March tune. Even the three Ceratech constructs marched in rank and file. I guess they knew how off-putting this was as well. Eventually I do see a set and extensive chamber opening up ahead. The Praetorian awaited me. She stood before a set of doors of impossibly grand height. She was to take me into the council's grand amphitheater. I entered into the amphitheater unsure of what to expect. The room much like everything to the tomb world was of an over the top architecture, every BAS relief, each column even grove and the intricately tiled floor brimmed with artisanry unlike any I had seen, all rendered in blackstone no less. And it was at the back of the chamber I saw the council members. Lifted high above on ornate balcony perched thrones places sat a council three or inspiring necrons. On its left wall stood a crooked cyclopean necron. Adorned in a tiled cape of the most antiquitous make was the high metallurgist Quelker. On the far right was a more stern orange-eyed Necron. His golden death mask was crowned with small dividing grooves to present his status. He kept a hyperface sword within his grip. He was Lord Nemesis Ubika of the Mephrit dynasty. And lastly at the center was another Necron. Her necrodermis was to a near chrome finish and she bore a splayed and spiked crown that bore strange orbs of unknown portents. She was Ferak Osuaria of the Rytak dynasty. When I did finally pull my attention away from the reigning council members I looked around for Trazin elsewhere in the room. And unpleasantly I found both he and Orican in the room. I sent a rapid fire interstitial message to Orican. Why the fuck are you here? I was nudged forward by Phileas. Making sure you're not marmalized bastard, now shut up before I change my mind. Oh god my life is in the hands of these two. I'm going to die. I stepped forward and lowered my head in a bow. I can feel my legs wanting to give way. My Ferak Osuaria, Lord Nemesis Ubika, and High Metallurgist Quilker I am humbled to be in your presence. I just need to stick to the landing. If worst comes to worst I'll need to use my meter knowledge. I stood myself behind a plinth. 
taking hold of both ends of it as I came to look eye to eye with my superiors. Quelka was the first to speak. The council recognizes Master Aishka, High Transmogrifier of the Vukla Dynasty. Farak Osoaria gave a glare to the metallurgist before turning her narrowed glance to me. And we have summoned you here to discuss the portents of these premansions of yours that Trazin has shared with us in your absence. After a good start the council see me as some sort of a stromancer. Nemesa Zubica chimed in. And to verify these various claims we have summoned for Orokin, seer of the Sortek dynasty. Fuck, right after I dunked that bastard into the dumpster. I turned my head slowly to meet oculars with the bastard Orokin. Is that so? Was all I could sputter out. Orokin stepped forward to his own plinth. I felt my grip tighten around the polished edges of my own plinth. From what cursory details our dear Trazin has provided, Orokin was fucking with us. I could see him enjoying the fact he had the upper hand for the moment. And I have found that indeed, the Tom world of a gun. Shall not rise alongside the rest of our kin when the great awakening is to occur. After such an announcement I could see the head of Cryptic Quelka dip ever so slightly, perhaps saddened? So your pronouncement is true Master Aishka, it is good that you have brought this to our attention. Also Arya almost sounded like she wasn't disgusted with me. That is wonderful news. I say relieved. I look to Trazin and over to Orokin with a smile. But while we may approve of that endeavor there is still other matters we wish to discuss. Lord Nemesis Zubica leveled his hyperface sword to me. Execution of Phileas tells of several. Irregularities noted when conducting an investigation in your dynasty's region void space. Zubica ran his fingers over the tip of his chin. She has noted within her report that an entire force of 387 warriors, 232 immortals, 91 death mercs, and 31 lich could have been reanimated before their time. Also Arya chimed in with vile glee. Such an action would result in the termination of your reanimation protocols and the permanent death, for a gross misuse of power and extreme incompetence. She lowered her head. Quelka spoke up. But as the report stated, it claims that of the 741 Necrons raised, 354 Necrons above the rank of warrior, were actually awoken with personality returned even if dulled, and memories matrices operating above standard. Execution of Phileas finished for them. Why yes, all of them awoken simultaneously no less. Quelka continued. Oh. Oh this might actually be good. Given such an unusual occurrence we have had your newly awakened army brought to Bakura to appraise the state of them for ourselves. Also Arya said. Execution of Phileas opened the door, already having selected a roster of Necrons. Four immortals were brought in. All but one was wilding the new armaments I had made during the voyage. Two death mercs, one with a set of pistols at his hip. One lich good with no alterations and a standard weapon choice. These are mortals and death mercs, these are not standard weapons. We shall discuss that later. Quelka noted. Execution of Phileas has indeed vouched for us that these selected warriors are free of any signs of the viruses that blight us. Zubica followed. Quelka, would you? Zubica gestured to the gathered necrons, implying something but I did not know what. The metallurgists nodded and he began casting a quick appraisal scree over the necrons. Quelka was scanning over their minds, and holy shit it's been an entire 6 months of standing here holy shit. In the meantime I've been in slow talks with Trazin via interstitial messaging. More or less he is confident with the sales pitch be sent their way. Though he does expect me to back up my claims. That won't be hard. After subjecting these necrons to extensive sensory scans, appraisal screes, and a litiude of other tests. I find that the claims are true. Notes of autonomous thinking, personality, and an relatively intact memory of the time during the war in heaven have been found present within engramtic neural networks. I am sending you each highlights of the files gathered. Quelka pulsed raw data of the collected memories and thoughts of the warriors before us. Each of us received flashes of the war. Unpleasant memories but we received them all the same. Most of us felt something akin to sadness or remorse. Whilst Zubica looked like he was experiencing something next jubilation at the memories of murdered gods. So this is what the outsider was like Iyashka, dead gods what a fight that was. 
Zubaka was relishing the memories, embracing them rather than respectfully lowering their head like the other two council members. Fucking memes are of course. The old laws nor the new cannot condemn such actions. Phileas exclaimed. Rather such abilities should be put to use for the benefit of the entire empire. Quelka proclaimed, with arms outstretched. What? Orican, Trazin and I all exclaimed. Executioner Phileas chimed in with the dangers of the previously intested stasis sarcophagi have indeed caused untold damages to those who have arisen, once noble lords and ferons have awoken as nothing but unthinking atomontons. Osoaria continued. And has presented us the potency of your technomancy abilities on Curator Sanit. We would be remiss if we did not put your talents to use. I turned to Trazin, and I find that he seems to be absent-mindedly looking elsewhere. Do you have any idea what you've just done? I pulsed at him. In addition to awakening worlds and such dire straits you will be expected to securely rouse and repair the ruling echelons of each dynasty should the 60 million years of slumber have caused significant degradation. Quelkin nodded to himself content with this outcome. Osoaria, Zubakarin seemed to be in mutual agreement. How in the fuck did all four manage to come to an agreement like this? I am at a loss of words, and all I can do is stand stiff. I look at Trazin, mumbling to him. Your sales pitch was too much. I felt like withering on the spot. In the book all three members of the council were at each other's throats when these two yahoos were involved. What had I done to make them so unanimously agree with this verdict? I was so caught in my own thoughts that I didn't even get to hear what Trazin, Orican and the Awakened Council were on about for the next hour. When I eventually did snap out of it. My apologies your council, but does this mean I will be receiving the aid of our high metallurgist Quelka? He nodded. Yes you will be provided with assistance from the council and the Trioc Praetorian in restoring the various Tom worlds that will be lost to us during the great sleep. You will be expected to dedicate fully a third of your time to this endeavor. You will be free to use the remainder of your time with dynastic responsibilities. Oricon spoke up. That is all good and fine, but if you will excuse me, I must get going. He said with scoff. Wasting my time, kept me waiting for decades will you. He grumbled as he moved on by me. Ahem, Phileas was moving us on to the next matter. The weapons you presented. The Trioc has no records of such weapons, I would have you delve into when you created such instruments of war. Phileas was cut off. As would be, these patterns would serve well if distributed to the wider empire. Nemesis Zubaka moved forward in his chair, clearly interested. Phileas continued. Along with the two variant patterns of the Wraith constructs. Should they prove suitable for use the Trioc Praetorian will commence work on having them produced and distributed to other dynasties. Of the arsenal witness we have already been appraised as to the destructive force by Quelka when the memories were distributed. Osoaria explained. These and mythic weapons will be quite useful in taking down organics. I might consider going on these hunts I have seen your death marks have been on about. Zubaka seemed quite pleased with the notion. Phileas started a detailed report on the effectiveness of the arsenal I had created. The Gorse Destructor was instantly adopted and would be distributed to the wider Necron Empire. The Inmitic Disintegrator Pistol was also approved for use as offhand weapon by certain high-ranking Necron officials. The Inmitic Exterminator would be given some field work before it could be approved for wider use. It is most unprecedented to have so many items turned to the Trioc Praetorian. The last development of any note was Tomb Sentinel. Submitted just before the great sleep was made, you should be proud cryptic. Executioner Phileas turned to me. I swished smiling at me, but that death mask of hers probably hasn't moved so much as a micron in the last 42 million years. But we are not done. The Canoptex Scorpioid and the Canoptex Scorpets are marched into the room. Trazin looks quite interested in these three. Ishka you didn't tell me about these constructs, what are those talents? Trazin inquired. They were a new development some decades ago, you were busy on some acquisition run. I admitted. What exactly is the idea behind this strange design? Osoaria asks. I plan on doing excavations and harvesting, these hyperface thresher's claws were made for my own self-indulgent wants. Zubaka chortled at that. Before saying a pair of archaeologists then, 
It only took 42 million years before Trazim found a kindred mind. Well guys hope you enjoy today's video. We are going to assume you have if you have stayed to the end. Consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell if you really enjoyed it to stay up to speed with any and all new videos. Also check out the links below to our shop for some fat ass titties and our sponsor Rural and be sure to use a promo code at checkout so they know we sent you and you'll get 10% off. And until next time.